in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you're welcome to another spirit filled message on fifty centric message if you're new to this channel I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted unto you and then God is going to visit you always thank you for watching be blessed we have come to learn we have come to encounter you we have come as proof that we know there is more for us in Christ help us tonight oh God as we break the bread of the spirit open our eyes to see let us learn truths that will grant us grace to command marvelous results and for everyone here who has been discouraged wondering if God can come through for you you're wondering if the principles that you are learning actually work I bring you a word of hope I bring a word to activate your spirit God is not a man that he should lie this is the word for you already this night God is not a man he became a man but he's not a man that he should lie neither the son of man that he should repent they looked unto him the Bible says and their faces were lightened Thank you, Father. Help us tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Please be seated. It's good to be back home. Thank you for your patience. And I believe that the Lord will do us good in Jesus' name. I assure you by the Spirit that there will never be a time when you will come here gathered and return back the way you came. We're in his presence and the Bible declares that in his presence there is fullness of joy at his right hand are pleasures forevermore amen and amen God has been dealing with us across several aspects of the Christian life the assignment of a man of God among other things is to expose the people who have been brought to you by grace to the precepts of the kingdom the principles that make for excellence in the kingdom and the bible lets us know that the growth of a believer is a school and so it is line upon line it is precept upon precept here a little there a little we're learning and building for many of us the truths that god is exposing here are truths that we probably may not have paid attention to to others God is bringing a refreshing to us and then for others he's giving us greater levels of enlightenment let me just tell you this results in this kingdom are not a coincidence find a way of convincing yourself results of any sort in this kingdom is intentional can be replicated again and again and again number two understand that results matter in this kingdom the Bible says in John 15 and verse 8 it says herein is our father glorified that ye bear much fruit everybody say much fruit God intends for the saints in light to produce levels of results that will compel principalities and powers according to Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10 to the intent that unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by the church the manifold wisdom of God the Bible says let your light so shine before men 
not just before angels. He wants them to see your good works and in it they will glorify your Father who is in heaven. Are we together? So the truths that we communicate in this kingdom, among many other factors, they do the following. Number one, they help us to know God. Understand this. The primary assignment of revelation is to increase your illumination. Listen to me. In this kingdom, it is as far as your eyes can see, not as far as is available. As far as your eyes can see. It says, from where thou art, Abraham now, it says, lift up your eyes. Eastward, northward, southward, westward, as far as your eyes can see, to you will I give. So, revelation, when we expose the believers to the word of God, it does the following. Number one, it helps us to know God. It helps us to know God. John chapter 17 and verse 3 says, And this is eternal life, that they may know thee, the one only true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent. That means in as much as eternal life comes instantaneously, the experience of eternal life happens at the instance of revelation. The unfolding of revelation begins to administer all of the dimensions of eternal life to the saints. It is possible that in Christ you can have that life haven't surrendered to Jesus, but never experienced the riches that are contained in that life. John 10, 10, the B part says, but I am come that ye may have life. Please pay attention. And that ye may have it more abundantly. There is a difference between life and life abundant. Life talks about the impartation of the life of God and the security, the eternal security that comes by reason of your commitment to Jesus Christ. Abundant life means the aforementioned in addition to an excelling life here on earth. That is abundant life. Are we together? But in this kingdom we rise through knowledge. I went up by revelation. So every time we expose ourselves to revelation, understand number one, that it helps us to know. Let the wise man not glory in his wisdom. Let the um, strong man not glory in his strength, but let him that glory at glory in this, that he understandeth and he knoweth me. The pride of the believer is that we know God. And I've done a teaching on that. Please get the teaching. You can find it online, knowing God. That according to scripture, there are four basic ways that the saints can learn God can know God. Number one is through scriptures. We learn the character and the principles of God in scripture. Number two, we can learn God through the names of Jesus that captured in every name of Jesus is a revelation of something about himself. Rapha in manifestation is not Sikenu. Sikenu in manifestation is not Jaira, although it is one and the same person. So we can learn God through his names. Number three, we can learn God by studying Jesus. The Bible calls him the express image of the invisible God. Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3. God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophet. The Bible says verse 2, hath in this last day spoken to us by his son. So God speaks by his son whom he had appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. Verse 3, the Bible says, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power. And then number four, we can learn God through our experiences. Job said, I have heard of you with the hearing of the ears, but now my eyes seeth you. Your experience can capture a rich dimension of God. This is why testimonies are important. They not only show us the results that have happened to the testifiers, they show us how else God can work. If you do not hear the testimony of the saints, you will be limited by your understanding of how far God can go.
to see that his saints are glorified. But in the testimony of the testifiers, you, you will see how God is able to navigate through situations and you see a display of his power, his wisdom, his love, and his authority over Satan and over situations and circumstances. Are we together? So the word of God helps us to know God. Number two, the word of God equips us to walk in victory. The word of God equips us to walk in victory. An excelling life is a product of knowledge. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. An excelling Christian life, please pay attention, is a product of knowledge. Exact knowledge. My people, it says, even though they are my people, they are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. There is such a state a believer can assume called the lack of knowledge. And it says, my people, there are things if you do not know as pertain longevity, you may cut short your life in an untimely way. There are things if you do not know about the blessing of the Lord upon the saints, you may live a miserable life even though saved, even though born again. There are things if you do not know about the Holy Spirit, you may rob yourself of an opportunity for a rich fellowship that translates to growth. There are things if you do not know about men, you may receive promises and visions and prophecies and yet your life remains grounded almost forever. Why do we come before God to learn? We come as a way of admitting our levels of ignorance unashamedly that when we come before him we come opened and we say Lord I confess that I do not know so far help me and the Bible says blessed are the meek there is a reward for them they are the ones who inherit the earth why do we come before God to correct our perceptions our perceptions the Bible says be careful so that what you call light be not darkness. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, the Bible says, but the end thereof is terrible that you can walk in error for a long time, believing that what you are holding onto is light. And then in the presence of greater light, you will see the futility of what you had called light. How do you know you are encountering God when your darkness is exposed to you? When the areas of darkness are exposed, you know that God is there so that you now can embrace light. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1, it says, Arise, shine, for your light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. And Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2, he asked Ezekiel to arise and Ezekiel did not have the power to arise. Ezekiel chapter 2, please, from verse 1 and 2. It says, Son of man, stand up upon your feet and I will speak to you. Rise from that level. And he did not have the strength. And the Bible says, verse 2, the spirit entered into me. There is an energizing that comes when his word comes. The spirit of God hides in his word. The spirit entered me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet. We do not just stand because we are tired of sitting. We stand because there is an energizing that comes at the instance of his word. Why am I telling you this tonight? I want to cultivate in you a passion for specific spiritual knowledge. Can I submit to you? There are many kinds of spiritual information across the body of Christ that are completely useless as far as the excelling of the saints is concerned. The Bible says you shall know the truth. It is not knowledge that delivers you. It is the information, the correctness of the information you know. You can know a lie and it will not set you free. You are not ignorant. There is something in your mind, but the information is inaccurate. It matters that what you know is the truth. You can know an opinion, an opinion does not set free. You can know a generally accepted opinion. It is only the truth that makes free. How do you know it is the truth? By the liberating power it brings to your life. Any information that keeps you in bondage is not the truth. 
if it is the truth, it sustains within itself the ability to liberate you. Are we together? Jesus spake a parable to help believers. And it is called the parable of the sower. He spoke about four kinds of soils. Nothing was wrong with the sower. Nothing was wrong with the seed, which the Bible refers to as the heart of man. Then the Bible says there were four kinds of soils that the seed was sown. On a rocky ground, by the wayside, on thorns, and then on good ground. And the Bible says the seed that falls on good ground are they that hear the word and understand it. What makes your ground good is understanding. What makes your ground barren is lack of understanding. And when Satan finds out that you do not have understanding, he comes immediately and he picks away that seed. Are we learning something tonight? So every time you come to church, don't carry a religious a religious understanding oh we are just coming to sing and let's hear what happens and let's see people fall down no 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 come with intention rejoice while you are coming because you know that your notepad or your ipad or whatever device you are going to leave writing something that makes you wiser that makes you better the assignment of the priest is to bring by the spirit life applicable truths not useless truths that just um, information that are uncoordinated and cannot produce exact results. Listen, be tired of random information around your life without an ability to prove. Truth is only useful when you can connect it to the result it produces. Don't give me an ingredient I will not be needing in the meal I seek to prepare. If my assignment is to cook fried rice and you bring beautiful tubers of yam, I will keep them there. They are not relevant as far as what I intend to produce. There is the knowledge that puffs up and has no results attached to it. The Bible says that we receive with meekness the engrafted word. With meekness, a preparedness of heart. Are we together? You will be surprised at how easy it is to live a victorious life when you understand the systemic character of God. Understanding the systemic character of God is the key to living an excelling life. There is Jesus the way, the methodology of the kingdom. Jesus the way. He shows you the path that moves you from point A to point B. And you see, while he's teaching you, your life may carry a semblance of defeat and failure. Don't worry about your current state. Dr. Miles Monroe defines fact as the present state of things. The truth is the way it ought to be from the eyes of God. Fact can be deceptive. The fact may be that you may not be empowered financially as at, as at the moment. The fact can be that you are still experiencing some level of ill health. That is fact, the present state of things. But hallelujah, the Bible tells us that transitions are possible in this kingdom. It says, while we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal. Temporal means subject to change under a certain condition. Not every condition, a certain condition. When you create the condition that sponsors change, change will happen. And the Bible tells us the condition for change. As we behold him, as in a mirror, the Bible says we are changed from glory to glory into the image that we are seeing. So whilst you are seated here, you are not just listening to a man preach. You are not just exhausting the time allocated for a church service. No, in the realm of the spirit, there is an ascendance happening to you. Truly, truly, there is an intellectual ascendance. There is a spiritual ascendance. You are, you are sustaining the ability to command results. 
Be patient with yourself and give yourself some time. Submit yourself. That's what the word baptism is from the Greek word baptizo. Immerse yourself into a body of truth. He says meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly to them. And it leaves you with an assurance that your profiting will appear unto all. Nothing speaks at the beginning. It is always at the end that it speaks. So an attack on your prayer life, an attack on your, not just your word study life, an attack on your ability to listen is a real attack. You know, in a church service like this, the devil too tries to loiter around, deceiving people, distracting people. The word of God is coming from heaven to change, to build, to transform. And here comes the devil, the master of the flesh realm, distracting with a phone call, distracting with some business idea, distracting with all kinds of things, and then we are lost, and our word comes and does not find us. Jacob said, the Lord was in this place, and I knew not. It is not only when hands are stretched and miracles begin to happen, people are falling under the anointing and the Holy Spirit is moving. No, he rides on the wings of his word. That sound that enters your ears is not sound that leaves the mic alone. As it leaves, there is an engracing. Many years ago, the Lord showed me a vision. You've heard me share it. In this vision, I saw a very big, like an ancient gate. And then that door, a door really, it had smaller doors. The vision zoomed to me and I saw smaller doors. And the doors were opening and closing, opening and closing. And for every door that opened, light would emanate from it. And I was wondering what this vision meant. And then the Lord began to speak to me. I saw scriptures written on every small door. And I learned by the speakings of the Spirit that for every revelation, there is an energizing. There is an anointing that backs every scripture you see. When that scripture opens up, the grace to defend it also comes. So the truths you know that you cannot defend has not yet become light to you. Ever learning, the Bible says, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Ever learning. This is why as ministers of the gospel, we must be apt to teach God's word. Because when people lend us their attention for an hour, two hours, three hours, it is evil, it is sin, it is wicked to just keep communicating opinions that are not life applicable. It is dangerous to keep believing and then find out that what you have believed is a lie. You see the reason why we pray. You see the reason why we worship. We cry unto him to show us mercy and grant grace that the light that comes from him will enter us with the purity with which it left heaven. Unadulterated by our ignorance. The ignorance of the vessel first. Something can leave God so pure and powerful and land upon a mind that is not transformed and nonsense will be communicated out of it to God's people. There are secrets in this kingdom. There is nobody. Many of us have houses and you have many rooms or chambers in your house. You don't bring a stranger into your living room. Do you do that? No. A stranger may just wait somewhere outside or at best maybe in your living room. But the more the relationship keeps growing, you can trust them and even take them to that holy of holies. The Bible says, the secret things of the Lord are with them that fear him. Listen, we excel in this kingdom on the strength of the secrets that we have and we hold. I have shared with you and let me recap on this. That when it has to do with the pursuit of God and the knowledge of God, even in heaven, we will continue to seek him and know him. There is no exhaustion. Are we together now? We will keep learning him and knowing him from glory to glory. But as far as living a victorious life is concerned, 
the reality of the divine life, the truths that you need are finite. They are not infinite. If you have the idea that the truths, the body of spiritual truth are located for your victory, are infinite, you are wrong. The truths that make wonders out of believers are finite. Like the course content of a student as you sojourn college, there is an exact course content. Learning does not stop, but you can know that the course content that makes for medicine and surgery, the course content that makes for architecture, you can exhaust it and you are awarded a degree as proof that you have exhausted that body of knowledge. While learning continues, you can stand proud knowing that you've gone through that curriculum. That's how it is spiritually. You can handle these truths and know by the privilege of God's mercy and grace that when it comes to financial prosperity, I have found the key. When it comes to longevity, I have found the key. When it comes to shattering the power of darkness over my life and all around me, I have found the key. This is what is translated into dominion. Dominion. It's not an impartation, you've heard me say. Dominion is the resultant effect of your piecing together these truths. So when darkness comes, you have within you the spiritual arsenals to launch at darkness. When failure comes, you have within you the spiritual arsenal. This is what maturity in the spirit is about. Maturity in the spirit is not measured by how frequent you have gone to church. No, not necessarily. You can be in church for a very long time and yet you are not transformed by this truth. May the Lord grant us grace in the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord grant us the capacity to maximize every moment we spend in his presence, in prayer, in worship, and when the word comes, embrace it. Allow the word to change you and you watch what your life becomes. In the name of Jesus Christ. Very briefly, let me talk tonight about a subject that has not been understood in the body of Christ properly, in my opinion. I think that there has been a lot of confusion as far as understanding this subject is concerned. I've heard people preach about this subject. I've heard people make a lot of propositions. Many people have they have made known what can happen to a believer when you possess the understanding of this truth. But not many people have been able to walk in light of it. The grace of God. Please write it down and begin to pray in the spirit as the Lord grants us fire tonight that comes from heaven. The grace of God. Is someone praying? Oh, my life is about to change. Pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, two scriptures, 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 14, we are discussing the grace of God. Please read with me, believers, if you can see it projected ready. One to read, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. One more time. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. Scripture number 2, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1. Therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Find your strength. Find your audacity. Find your confidence. 
Find your security, not just in your ability, not just in your wisdom. My son, please keep the scripture. It says, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Let's add one more scripture. Ephesians chapter 2, please, from verse 8 to 9. Our online family following from whatever television station and whatever online platform, I want you to pay attention, have something to write. Don't just listen. You're not just watching a program. God is coming to you to change your life. Get something to write. Settle down and understand. He says, for by grace are ye saved. And that true faith, it is not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. By grace are you saved. By grace are you saved. The subject of the grace of God is one that has been, I will say, it has been taught quite frequently in the body of Christ I think we've, there, there's, a, there's a great sense of awareness the average believer understands that there is something he has an idea of something called the grace of God he may not fully understand the scope of it and how he works but at least he knows enough that whoever by any means seems to possess that attribute called the grace of God is empowered supernaturally to live a victorious life but many believers have not understood the scope of what the bible calls grace nor the administration of that grace this is my assignment tonight to help us understand from scripture what the bible refers to as grace and then to help show us the dimensions of grace and by the spirit of god show us how to receive grace and the administration of grace. Are we blessed? The Bible is full of scriptures that talk about the grace of God. I just took a few of them. There are many others. Grace. Let's attempt to define grace. Let's attempt to define grace. Ephesians 1 verse 3. If you ask the average believer, please look up. And by this teaching, I do not intend to create any controversy or finger pointing. You have to be very careful. Every time you receive truths, there is no tell them, there is no say to them, there's no such thing in this house and should not be in the body of Christ. The truths that come are for your lifting. When you benefit from those truths, then you can extend the same in love to as many who are ignorant or not, not holistic about that concept. Are we together now? Yes. The Bible says, Ephesians 1 verse 3, please. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Look up, please. It says, Who had blessed us with how many? All spiritual blessings. Everyone, please say after me, All spiritual blessings. In heavenly places, in Christ. This is the definition of grace. The grace of God is defined as the blessing of God. All spiritual blessings that reside in heavenly places in Christ is called grace. The first mistake I want to correct about our idea and the subject of grace is the very definition that has existed for a long time in the body of Christ. The average believer defines grace as unmerited access. That is not a lie, but it's not the whole truth. Just defining grace as unmerited access, I understand that grace is access, but it is not only access. I understand that there is a dimension of grace that is truly unmerited. But to believe that generically speaking, grace is unmerited access is a well-intentioned, well-meaning definition, but is completely inaccurate. 
The very definition is what sponsors irresponsibility in believers and now creates a, a laxity to press into the dimensions of grace. Are we together? So the average believer says, grace is unmerited. And here's the idea. If God wants to bless you, God can just bless you. He chooses whoever he wants to bless and then grace. And if it so happens to be you, then you receive it. The moment it comes to your life, doors just open. People just help you. Mountains, no, no, no. Even as limited as we are, we have more intelligence than that. The God of the universe will not design a system so flawed. So many people sit down and continue to confess grace and believe that they have grace and yet their lives don't move. Doors remain short, they remain mediocre, they fail and they don't make progress. They don't represent the purposes of God to the degree that God intends. And after a while, they begin to wonder themselves, what is wrong with my idea? The grace of God. So we have defined grace. I'm going to give you other definitions, but I need to establish a few things. The grace of God is not limited to access alone. No. And the grace of God is not entirely unmerited. That is an incorrect communication. The Bible does not teach that. It is only... Give us this scripture. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 10. Let me allow the Bible speaks for itself. The Bible says, but the God of all grace. Everybody say all grace. He never said the God of grace. He said the God of all grace now suggests immediately that grace is dimensional. The God of all grace, just like all wisdom, all grace means that it is dimensional. Is that true? Please sit down. There are largely two dimensions of grace. Not the only ones, but for our exegesis of scripture tonight, there are two dimensions of grace. Listen carefully. There is what we call in theology the saving grace. The grace that saves. Are we together now? There is the saving grace. According to Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 8 and 9. The grace that saves. What is the character of this dimension of grace? The, the miracle that comes from that grace. Listen carefully. The miracle that comes from that grace is not produced by the recipient. The recipient is only a benefactor of that grace. That miracle is called in theology the finished work of Christ. Are we together now? So when we talk about the saving grace, we are talking about the grace that is imparted upon the believer. Number one, to help you believe the gospel. And then it is that grace that is upon you when you do receive what we call the finished work of Christ, the substitutionary sacrifice. Jesus Christ did everything alone on the cross as far as the price for sin is concerned. No man assisted him. Man assisted him to carry the cross, but the entire spiritual journey, the transaction, spiritually speaking, he did it alone. Are we together? The Bible says it is not of works. What works? Not just the, the works of the law. Number one, that are unable to save you. And then number two, any effort to save yourself outside of what Jesus has done on the cross is vain and is futile. This is doctrine from scripture. We are saved on account of the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus Christ, which he did alone. His passion, his death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension, his enthronement was entirely done alone. 
no human being sustains in himself the ability to save himself the mere fact that we did not create ourselves means that we are unable to save ourselves is that true only the creator sustains that ability to help his creation and Jesus came as a representation of the love of the father please understand this I've taught you this here that the one of the major reasons why Jesus came was as a representation of the love of the father to man and then creation he demonstrated the love of the father through his substitutionary sacrifice his death his burial and his resurrection so the saving grace is the grace that helps you to hear and believe that gospel if that grace is not upon you you will not believe that report you will hear it like many people hear it today and they harden their hearts and ignore it they say this is some christian nonsense but if that grace is upon you then you are caught to the heart that was the grace that came upon three thousand men on the day of pentecost the Bible says they were caught to the heart and they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? He said, repent for the remission of your sins and then you shall receive this promise for the promise is unto you and to your children, your children's children, those who are afar off, as many as the Lord will call, saving grace. But there is another dimension of grace called the enabling grace. This grace does not get things done for you it empowers you so that even though the effort is being exerted by you but it is not in the strength of the flesh are we together now watch this a classic example of enabling grace is this mic i am holding who is doing the speaking who is doing the amplifying can i amplify my voice but is this speaking? The potential of this mic is when I am in partnership with it speaking. The assignment is to make what I have released and amplify it beyond my effort. Are you getting the point now? This is the dimension of grace the body of Christ does not understand. And so here's what we do. God, your grace is able to lift me. God, your grace is able to bring destiny helper. And God is saying, this is not how it works. The labor of the fool weary at every one of them. The grace that enables. This is what Apostle Peter was teaching. So when he says, the God of all grace, the grace that saves and the grace that empowers if I lay hands on someone who is on a wheelchair and the person gets up from that wheelchair I do not have that power but there is an engracing by the spirit is that true that person would not stand up just in his house like that he had to come to the house of God he had to release his faith and the man of God had to minister to him as you are sitting like this God wants to touch you God wants to bless you but you will be surprised even though he wants to touch you he will keep quiet as though he cannot do it but he ministers to me now and I say the power of God is touching you you begin to see it happen it is not just when I started speaking that he wanted to do it he's always wanted to do it but if you do not know how the enabling grace works you will keep waiting forever If you're with me, say amen. amen. So the Bible lets us know that it is all grace. 1 Peter 5 verse 10. Let's hurry up please. 1 Peter 5 verse 10. Let's read together. Let me show you what grace does when it is entire. Are we together? Ready? One, two, read. But the God of all grace who had called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after that he have suffered a while number one make you perfect number two establish you number three strengthen you number four settle you all grace all grace all 
all grace. There is the grace that brings salvation. It is saving grace. But there is the grace that empowers the believer to walk in victory. For instance, the grace that comes upon your prayer life, granting you the capacity to pray and to be diligent in prayer. If you don't pray, even if the grace is on you, it will be unfruitful. Because the grace depends on your participatory contribution. Now, when you are praying, you are not neglecting what Christ has done. You are taking advantage of what he has done and you are making use of it. Are we together? Now, watch this, please. If you want to take tea, you bring your milk, you bring your whatever beverage you are going to use, sugar or honey, whatever it is. Now, most of those beverages have been made already. You don't need to make it. Is that true? It's already there. But who does the mixing? As you mix it, it becomes tea. Even if the tea was made for you, you have to turn it into a cup. And even if it's turned in the cup for you, you have to pick it. Even if it's picked for you, you have to put it in your mouth. Even if it's put in your mouth, you have to swallow it. There must be, if it must enter your system and profit you, there must be a participatory role. Now listen, the role that we play on account of what Christ has done, to make good what is finished in our life now in experience is what the Bible calls faith. Faith. The name given to the participatory role. Without faith, the potential of God's grace can never be experienced. The second error I would say respectfully that I may want to, with every sense of respect, correct in the body of Christ, is the idea that the only thing you do, because there are people who have agreed that you have something to do, but the only thing people say to do is to repeat what God has said. Just repeat what God has said and it is done. It's not entirely true. No. Speaking is a fundamental law of faith that releases the grace of God, but not the only thing. If all you do is to keep saying, I am blessed and I am lifted, I go from glory to glory, in truth you will not go down. Your speaking will allow the Holy Spirit come to honor what you have, say, you have, you have said by showing you what else to do. Are you seeing now? There are many people who do not know what to do over their finances. They just declare, I will never be poor. You are not lying, but you will be very limited. There are people who doors have refused to open for them, and they just say, all I know is that I'm not going to remain down. You are right. The Bible says the righteousness that is of faith speaks on this wise. But speaking is not the only thing. We didn't see Abraham speaking alone. The Bible tells us that Abraham is our portrait of how to maximize grace that comes from God through faith. Is that true? Isaiah 51, I think, from verse 1 and 2. Look unto Abraham your father, he says. Understudy Abraham. Verse 2 now. Look unto Abraham your father and to Sarah that body. For I called him alone and blessed him and I increased him. That means study Abraham's life. What happened to Abraham when God called him? There was a conversation between Abraham and God. So we see speaking. But that was not the only thing that made him a benefactor of the promise. We see obedience. We see the endurance of patience. Is that true? The God of all grace perfect you, establish you, strengthen you, settle you. Let's define grace. What is the grace of God? Number one, I wrote here and I want you to listen carefully to this definition before you write. I said here that the grace of God is a state of consciousness. The grace of God is a disposition of understanding of the limitless provisions and the possibilities that are contained in God, 
but only accessed through the office of the Christ. This is grace. The first definition of grace is that it is a disposition of understanding. It is a consciousness of the limitless provisions, the vastness of God's power, the vastness of God's blessings. All that makes God, God is called grace. Grace is like a warehouse that contains the entire riches of heaven, the entire riches that are contained in God. That warehouse, the consciousness of the existence of such a possibility is grace. Listen, none of us here is struggling to breathe in and out. Do you know why? It is not only because your nose can take in air and bring out air. It is because there is a consciousness in you that there is a limitless abundance. The moment you are aware that the air here is limited, we are going to have bitterness, we are going to have jealousy. Everybody will try to protect his portion of air. If you bring your nose near someone's, someone's circumference of air, the person says, go away, because there is an awareness of limitation. There has to be an awareness in the saints of the vastness of the riches of Christ. That the reason why God is lifting another is not why another is down. That everybody can equally excel and rise and thrive and God still remains full. Are we together now? If you have that understanding, please listen, you have to learn this. If you have that understanding of the vast riches, the grace of God, a consciousness, a disposition of understanding that when it has to do with the healing power of God is unlimited. When it has to do with passion, supplying passion, just because God has given me a grace to love him, he can give another person and another person and another person. When you know this, the doctrine of superstar Christianity is unnecessary because the same Lord can be rich unto how many? Inasmuch as there is the election of grace as we call it, but I'm telling you everyone can press into the fullness of the dimensions of Christ. All of us seated here can prosper. All of us seated here can know God and love God with such passion. Every one of us here can be a custodian of a dimension of God's anointing. Every one of us can make advancement and yet God is still saying who is left in as much as everyone has received that our partaking of this does not deplete him. Please pay attention. It is because we understand the vastness of God's grace that we can give freely without withholding if you are not aware of this consciousness it will be difficult for you to give freely imagine if for every one naira or one dollar that goes out of your account ten naira comes will you be greedy confess but because you know that if I take ten naira it goes down. 100 naira, it goes down. You say, no, I've tried. That's gone down. I, I, won't, I won't do that to myself. But imagine if there is a system that makes it to continue multiplying. This is, this is why God is a giver. He gives because there is no depletion in his economy. You have to understand this. This is the revelation of grace that you must have. The all-surpassing riches of Christ. The Bible calls it spiritual blessings. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Spiritual blessings in heavenly places. But, now let me tell you this. There are many other kinds of spiritual blessings. But this one we are talking about. If it is the grace of God, you can never access it negating Christ. Jesus Christ is the only door that leads to receiving genuine grace. Are you seeing now? Because there are many people that try to rout the grace of God and they take Jesus out of the equation. No. The Bible says every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. The office of the Christ is the only office by which men can access genuine grace that comes from God. 
is called the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. So anyone who truly desires that grace, you don't just reach for the grace ignoring Jesus. He is the door that leads to that grace. Are you seeing that now? Do you know why this is important? You'll be learning something I will share with you a bit, a bit after now. When people see the dexterity of this grace upon your life, chances are that they will bypass Jesus and yet want the grace. You have to be able to defend how this grace came. Because men will tell you, look, I don't love Jesus. I'm not interested in him. If he's wisdom, if he's this, pray for me. And you tell him, look, the administration of this grace demands that you must come through the door. The door means the authorized channel. If a, if a visitor follows the window and enters your house, he's in your house, but is he welcome? What do you call such a person? A thief. A thief is a visitor, but he's unwelcome and unneeded. If we do not understand the concept of grace accurately, many people will continue to boast in the flesh and Jesus will eventually be out of the picture. If it is genuine grace, you cannot take Jesus out of the picture. No, he remains at the epicenter of everything grace. Is God speaking to us? So the grace of God referred to the entire bank of God's riches and God's blessings. Salvation being the first, but not the only. Salvation being the first, but not the only. Let's attempt to list the rest. Mercy, deliverance, favor, speed. All these possibilities are captured in that bank called grace. Mercy is grace. Faith is grace. Deliverance is grace. Anointing is grace. Provided it came from God through Christ to you. The spiritual name is grace. Please, do, do, do we have this understanding now? Yes. So when we say it is the grace of God, you are right. How did you do this kind of thing? How did you build this? It is the grace of God. What you mean is that the possibilities that I'm enjoying came from this spiritual reservoir. It came through Christ to me. And now I am enjoying it. The grace of God. The second definition of grace, very quickly. The second definition of grace, which is equally useful for our teaching tonight, is the empowerment. The spiritual empowerment or enablement. Write it down, please. The spiritual empowerment or the enablement that results from this consciousness. What consciousness? The consciousness that God is infinitely limitless. The consciousness that everything I ever need for life and godliness is in Christ. When you have that consciousness that God is a giver and that this God and this kingdom that we so talk and boast about is a compendium of infinite possibilities. When you understand this, there is an empowerment that comes from that consciousness. The name of that empowerment and that enablement is called grace. Hmm. So if I believe that in Christ, healing is possible, there is an empowerment that comes based on that consciousness. Are we together? If I believe that it is true, God prospers, there is an empowerment. The assignment of that empowerment is to bring you into the experience of what you have believed. Listen carefully. The assignment of that empowerment that we call grace, grace as an enablement, grace as help, Grace as empowerment has the assignment to bring you into the experience of the things you have believed. So if I believe that God is a lifter, is it true from scripture? Yes. Has he lifted people from scripture? Yes. By having that consciousness that God is a lifter, the grace for lifting comes to my life in honor it comes to honor the fact that I believe that dimension of God. 
And let me tell you this, when that empowerment comes, because grace can teach, it begins to open me up to the participatory dynamics that make for lifting. So I find myself operating at a frequency of wisdom that mere human beings would not be able to have. The wisdom emanates from that empowerment. If I believe that God can make ordinary men powerful, I believe that because it is true from scripture. That grace, that anointing of the Holy Spirit comes upon me and I'm able to prove it here and now with my life that God empowers people. So I can speak to someone and say by tomorrow, return lifted and the person just leaves believing that it was just a word that came on him and by the next day that word that came on him will start drawing destiny helpers will start making him act in a certain way until prophecy comes to pass it's called the enabling grace are we together now if i pray for you and i say in the name of jesus the prophetic or apostolic or pastoral calling upon your life let it be fanned to flames if you believe what I have said, the grace that empowers you will come on you. It is that grace that will start planting an appetite for prayer. Because in any case, without prayer, you will not grow. In any case, without word study, you will not grow. But the empowerment to do it does not come from you. The will to do it and the discipline to do it comes from you. But the empowerment to do six hours, three hours is not your strength. Are we learning? So, look up. It is true that the grace of God looks like you are not doing anything. But that is not entirely true. The grace of God grants you salvation so that you are in Christ. That becomes your legitimate ground for receiving every other thing. The moment the saving grace is administered to you, what is the assignment of the saving grace? It helps you believe the gospel. Without the saving grace at work in your life, you cannot believe the gospel. The saving grace helps you to, to believe the gospel. And then it is responsible for the impartation of Zoe, God's life. From that time onwards, the level of grace that is at work in you is called the enabling grace. The grace that empowers you. The energy is supernatural, but the doing is still you. So, I pick up my Bible by the Spirit of God. And I begin to study. Ordinarily, I should not find anything. Ordinarily speaking, I should not see anything that culminates to revelation. Except that I'm not just reading it in the flesh. What does it mean to read in the flesh? By your efforts. Only engaging your sensory perceptions. Now whilst I am reading, the Holy Ghost, you see that now. He comes and breathes upon me by that grace he has given me. And suddenly, I just turn to a scripture. I just feel like going online. To type something and you find one scripture then you see a 19 minute message or a 21 minute message you had no business going there but there was a grace it was responding to your participatory you see that now you were participating with that grace that 19 minutes vi video leads you to a link leads you to a website now you have found truth and you kneel down there crying how did these people know that this is what i was looking for grace God knows that the call upon your life will require stretching and mentorship and discipline. And so whilst you are praying and say, God, show me mercy, all of a sudden you feel led to go to the market. But why should I go to the market after the rain? Whilst you are in that market, then you will see a poster. That poster leads you to a crusade that leads you to a church that leads you to the answer to your prayer. That is grace. It was grace moving you all the way, but you cooperated with that grace. That's why you are seeing the potential. You would have ignored it and the grace will still remain there. Listen, did you know in 2 Kings chapter 4, the oil 
had the ability to solve that woman's problem. But the oil could not multiply itself on its own. There was something she had to do to release the potential of that oil. What was her assignment? Increase the vessel. When she came to the prophet, the prophet said, you are a prophet's wife? No, this is not how God works. You are sure you are a prophet's wife? Yes, sir. My husband is late. He said, no. There must be something in your house. What do you have? Said nothing. He said, no. Check. I said, oh, oil. And the oil was listening to the conversation. And said, for years I have been here. You don't know what would have happened to your life. You never would have tasted of poverty if you had recognized that I am here waiting for your participation. As soon as the prophet gave her counsel, he said, I know where the problem is. You have been waiting for the oil to find its way to fill vessels. You go and borrow vessel. Don't borrow oil, but go and borrow vessel. Whatever it will take you, you can plead with your neighbor, help me. Don't be ashamed. Go and outsource these things. And when she came, listen carefully. Listen. He said, now that you have it, shut your door and begin to pour and the oil said now that you have done your part watch and see that this was no ordinary oil so god gives you your finances and in your dreams you're having visions of you thriving and yet you are going down because the grace has been waiting but there is no knowledge to know what to do with that grace you see that faith is not acting Faith is acting based on the conditions tied to the promise. There is always a condition. You don't choose what to do. You find out what you are supposed to do. Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2. It shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord. The Bible says to observe and to do all his commandments which I command you this day. He says that the Lord will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Every time God speaks, the grace to make what he said come to pass starts hovering around the vicinity where that word was spoken. But the grace keeps waiting there. Who can believe that word and find out the condition that makes for the activation of that grace? Listen. When it was time for Jesus to come upon the earth, there was an engracing that came by the Holy Spirit waiting for that virgin, in this case Mary. If Mary refused and said, thank you for all this, your story, uh, Gabriel, go back to heaven and tell God I'm not stupid. He would have respected her will and the word alongside the grace would have looked for another person. But here's what Mary said, be it unto me according to your word the moment that happened the grace called the power of the highest that overshadows how shall these things be she asks an honest question i'm willing to cooperate but can a woman give birth without a man and gabriel said leave the rest just understand your own part is your own part is to agree god is not a demon he will not force a baby inside your womb And she said, be it unto me. The same way, I hope you know that she had a responsibility of carrying that baby for nine months. And can I tell you honestly, I believe that she went through the normal things women go through when they are pregnant. Don't you think she was smiling every day, carrying a heavy Jesus? No. There were times she felt this Jesus. I, they told me you are the king of kings. You are inside my stomach. I am tired. But her will kept playing the role. When it was time she would have refused and said you are not coming out. You will know now that you are inside my stomach. She had to cooperate. Now, I, I, we, are we together now? Yes. Why didn't Jesus just jump out one morning and say thank you. I was only waiting to be nine months. He had to subscribe to the process of delivery when she gave birth. Why am I teaching you this? Please place value on what I'm teaching you. By the privilege of God's grace, 
this man standing before you, I'm not in ignorance over what I'm saying. I understand this thing. Many believers continue to live defeated lives in this kingdom because they do not understand the character of this enabling grace. The effort, the empowerment does not come from you, but the action of obedience comes from you. And until that action is taken, the grace remains futile. So God speaks to you and tells you you are going to be a CEO. You will build a foundation that will go around the globe. The moment you believe him, listen carefully, the grace starts hanging around your vicinity. But it doesn't mean anything is built. You will keep seeing visions till you get old if you remain like that. The day you now say, listen, the day you now say, I believe, let me start making efforts. Let me go and buy a book on building a business. You are now cooperating with that grace. A book that ordinarily you shouldn't have understood. He will empower your mind and you will start understanding. And whilst you are reading, you will find a phone number. You will come for koinonia like this. And that grace will shift you to sit down near somebody who has a foundation. And then you will see something written, so, so, so foundation. And you say, wow, this is amazing. You run a foundation. You say, I've been running this for 26 years. And the Holy Spirit will say, you see now, that is the person I wanted you to come to meet. Now you partner with that person. Watch grace at work. And the person says, okay, I will call someone in UK to help you. A connection is coming. It is not your wisdom. That's why at the end of it, when you stand in front of that edifice, if they ask you how did it happen, you will say grace. Because the dynamics. But I'm telling you, if you sat down at home there, you will be very surprised that that grace will not work. Look at me. There are many, many people who have not taken advantage of this grace. There are many men and women of God who want to rise to positions of influence. They want to be great. They want to carry power. But they just say, in Jesus' name, I won't be small. And they are surprised that they remain small as if God did not hear them. Let me tell you what the problem is. Here is the problem. You do not understand that this grace is activated through knowledge that leads to obedience and it is at the point of your obedience that the potential of that grace is released. It is at the point of obedience. Listen to me. Faith is not saying what God has said. Faith is doing what God has said. You can start by saying homologio, confession, repeat as you have heard, but it should not stop there. So, come Dave. God tells this man, I want to lift you as a worshiper and take you to the nations of the earth. Whether it comes by prophecy or it comes by a scripture that is found. He can decide to say, God, you have given me a word. I'm going to the nations and he will sit down there. The day he goes to get a guitar or a keyboard, he is now participating with that grace. Are you seeing now? You go to the market as you are saving, heaven is watching you. He buys a guitar, whether he can play it or not. Buys a keyboard. And the moment you do that, you have shown God that you are interested. He will now lead you to the person who will teach you. You see, you see him walking with you. I believe that God has called me to serve his purposes in the capacity that I serve. And I thank God for it. But sitting down to fold my arms and say the grace of God is at work in my life, I will be surprised till tomorrow. Let me show you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny
Salasta de Bashkana Kata Branda Katekatos, Kata Branda Kata Pakotos Koto Brekateka Nekata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline 